Welcome back to the Arcopia Show. Today I have a super cool podcast for you guys. So I think I mentioned before that, you know, starting in 2013, I made a few videos, I wrote a few chapters in books, but I never shared anything. I didn't have the guts to put my information out there. And boy, I'm glad because looking back at my stuff, it's man. But I'm going to post... Uh, a low quality video, but I adjusted the audio, so it's mostly just audio for you, uh, that I did in uh, January 2017, so nearly six years ago. Now, this video that I did with my predictions and analysis is more actually directly relevant to right now in September 2022. Um, now, what I didn't know back then, six years ago, is a few things that real estate would hyper bubble even further asset prices hyper bubbling um, the tech stocks overvalued stock market hyper bubbling the uh, uh, you know faith-based digital coins hyper bubbling and things like that and I also didn't realize that there's a term for what I was discussing in this and it's called stagflationary depression and we are here now and this is exactly what's happening and this video is or what I did before is relevant to right now my predictions from six years ago so I hope you enjoy let me know what you think saving money is better than making money what do I mean by that let's set the precedent so society is going into socialism like it or not so we have a bloated welfare state that bloats the public sector and the government which increases taxes and regulation which further destroys the private sector, which hyperinflates everything, which means there's less tax dollars coming in, which means they have to increase taxes, which means more destruction of the private sector, which means more bloated welfare in public sector and government, which leads to extreme inflation plus extremely high tax, eventually 100% if we keep going in this direction. End result is less money for everyone. Everything costs more. There's nowhere to invest. And there's less ways to make money. So just a quick example where I'm at uh, this year, 2017. Natural gas goes up 4%. Water goes up 9%. Property tax goes up 4%. Electric goes up 4%. Food, 6% and introduction of carbon tax everything goes up okay so socialism that we're going into so let's talk about making money so you're an employee public sector private sector doesn't matter have you noticed your wages are stagnant if you're in the private sector some sectors your wages might have even gone down by now increased taxes so not just carbon tax, income tax, regulations, everything. Uh, money buys less or hyperinflation. So the value of your dollar to go out and buy anything, money is less. Uh, less employment. So there's even less jobs out there. As a business owner, increased tax, increased regulation, increased fees. You're under the microscope, so more auditor expenses and accountant expenses. There's less business owners and the same amount of public sector, Revenue Canada, or IRS people. So you get audited every year. It's just part of being a business owner now. Uh, so you have to increase your prices from all this. Uh, through this, you have less buyers and you make less money. As an investor, Increased regulations, less returns, less to invest in, higher taxes, higher fees. Okay, so for real estate, if you own a rental property or any piece of real estate, there's less buyers, the prices go down, and you can't sell them even if you wanted to. So I always laugh this, one of the first books I went, read, The Wealthy Barber. Uh, if you haven't read it, it's an interesting read. It's like almost reading ancient times type of thing, but invest, you know, portion of your money, 10% in mutual funds and your money grows 10% every year. And I just laugh at it when I think about it nowadays. But so making money, harder 
less money to be made, everything. So saving money. Briefly, utilities and property tax. So a smaller house, if you have, they can only tax you so much property tax. Now this affects everybody, but over here you're trying to save money and why it's better than making. Smaller house, less property tax, the more high efficient you are, super insulated. Uh, utilities don't really affect you, your heating. So it doesn't matter what the money is for utilities. If you're extremely efficient, it affects you very, very little. Saving money. Water well. So you dig a water well. There's little bits of maintenance, but it's nowhere even close to hooking up to the city water type of thing. So it's almost free water forever. Solar panels, LED light bulbs, firewood. So it costs this much to buy it. But if you wait another month, it's going to be more to buy it. But once it's set up, utilities don't really affect you, do they? You're so efficient. Gardening. So you grow your own food. You need to let, make less money. Instead of going to a job or whatever, you spend the time on your garden. So you grow food that you consume. No taxes on that food. Inflation doesn't matter. So if a apple goes, uh, if you go to the grocery store, buy an apple, and you're wondering why it's $45 for one apple, it doesn't affect you if you have your own apples. But save seeds so potatoes if you buy a bunch of potatoes you're starting a garden you plant them you grow enough for you to consume you create the proper environment to store them through the winter you'll never have to buy potatoes again free saving money no money changes hands chicken coop expensive to start now but wait 10 more days it'll be more money right uh chicken coop so eggs aren't free they're cheap when you set up this system. So I have an apple tree example. So you decided I'm gonna spend money and a apple tree is probably $45 for a stick, take six years to, to grow it, but you have an apple tree. It costs nothing once it's established. Okay, it's more money to start the longer that you wait. So you have an apple tree established. It's free, you get free apples. Literally no maintenance once it's started and done properly. Free, so no taxes, no inflation. You're completely immune, no money changes hands. You're saving money on food. And it's better food for you. You don't sell them, you consume them. So the government come, can't come after you. Well, you got a little orchard here, you know, where's the money from this? Well, we didn't sell any, we ate it. Ha ha, too bad. Uh, barter. So you're busy or your orchard's doing so good you don't have enough time to pick. Go to your neighbor who maybe doesn't have an apple tree. You know what, here, take all the apples and you make pies and pie filling and stuff like this and you give me X amount of pies, okay? No money changed hands. Forever exempt from taxes and inflation. Just things in general that you buy once no intention of selling, never sell. Things that you use. Mason jars, a smoker, a solar dehydrator. Once you have them, they're yours. You never want to sell them because it's for your lifestyle. They're expensive as by the hour. More expensive by the hour. Manure, haul manure, establish a garden, wood chip mulch. So it's expensive to start a garden, a proper garden. But if you spend the money now, It'll be more expensive tomorrow, so if you do it now, it's set up and it literally costs almost nothing to maintain once it's set up and you do it properly, look into it. So just good tools, axes, hammers, shelving, not computers and iPhones and all that stupid shit, but stuff that lasts forever, that you take care of, that you use, and again, no intention of ever selling. So you buy it once, good for life, and your kids' lives and your grandkids' lives certain things. Older vehicle, saving money, cheaper to plate, parts are cheap. When you are making this system for yourself, you hardly drive anymore. Those older vehicles, if you take care of them and don't over kilometer them, don't drive that much anymore, they hold their value and they're not crap garbage. They're actual steel, don't have computers. Good investment. And you need a vehicle anyways. 
A hundred year roof, don't have to re-roof it. So you spend the money now on a roof. Uh, meanwhile, somebody put on a roof that doesn't last very long, have to re-roof it. Well, extreme inflation and extreme failure of the system means that roof will be 10 times as much as it costs now when you go to re-roof it. So 100 year roof. Uh, ammo, uh, what I've noticed the last five years is ammo has doubled in price. So I don't even like shooting. I go to the store and I just about throw up when I see the price of ammunition, but you, you buy what you figure you're going to need and then that's it. You store it, use it sparingly, stuff like that. So eliminate debt. So it doesn't matter what they're going to put interest rates and taxes and fees for having mortgage or financing or credit cards. Eliminate your debt and by saving money, it's doable. It's hard, but it's doable. Your home and homestead is not a financial investment. What do I mean by that? If you wanted to sell it because of this, there's almost no buyers to buy your setup, right? And you don't have the intention of selling. You have to live somewhere. So you buy your place, have it set up for this. There's no intention of ever selling it. So it's not even a financial investment. Don't think of it like that. Your health, take care of yourself. You don't need expensive health care if you do. When you create the system for yourself, you're growing your own food, you're healthier. You have apple trees, you're healthier. You have less stress, you're healthier. Take care of your health. The health care system is failing, obviously. You can just tell by this system. You want to stay, stay away from it, the health care traditional system, as much as possible. So sacrifices. No eating out, no toys, less luxuries, less fuel. When you create your system, you change, change your whole lifestyle. It takes, takes a while, but it's, uh, it's a beautiful life when you get to it. So you go out for a steak supper, just you and your wife, and you each have one glass of wine, and it's 100 bucks. That's a lot of money. You could have bought two or three apple trees today that you could have free apples for the rest of your life and stuff like that. Or put it to towards your chicken coop, and then you have cheap eggs, and then or build a pig pen and have a, you know, don't eat out, no more toys that don't hold their value, and that you need less luxuries, make sacrifices. Once you're in this lifestyle, it's a nice lifestyle. These become your luxuries, and it's a beautiful thing. Uh, so it takes very little money to live and be in the system. So this is, you'll never be able to go off grid. You'll never be able to exit the system, but you can drastically reduce your dependency on the system and what you contribute to the failing system. So what happens as more people leave the system and do this, you kind of have a little economy boom because uh, everybody's buying an apple tree and everybody's digging a well and everybody's buying a fireplace and everybody's buying these things that you buy once and never again. So it's a miniature kind of economy boom. It's still collapsing even with this type of boom, but next it further destroys the system. So you have this boom of people setting this up and then after it's set up, they contribute very little to this screwed up system. So it further dis destroys and creates more socialism, less people paying into it. Okay, next stage of socialism though, as more smart people do this, exit the system, this goes away and everything's bloated, tax your apples. So you have an apple tree, it has apples. Uh, I think they're gonna eventually tax your apples if this eventually comes. So. You have an apple tree producing free apples and then you eat it, but they're going to want to somehow control. They'll create a bureaucracy, come make sure, count how many apples you tree. You grow and eat and they'll try to tax you on this. How do I know this? In British Columbia, uh, there is a farmer. He dug a water well. Spent the money, it was like $15,000 and on all the bullshit fees and had the government and the environment bureaucracies come check it out. Water well, so he dug a well, he's got free water. 
they're charging him annual fees to have his water well and they're charging him a certain amount per gallon of water that he takes out of his water well for free so it's fascinating but if you're you're over here saving money no matter what happens you're still less affected and better off than ever, everyone else thanks hey it's me dean again in september 22 the present that i'm doing this podcast um so what i didn't realize in that video again is that there's a term for what i was describing that i learned later on stagflationary depression this is like one of the worst case possible scenarios we're going to have high inflation on the things that you need food housing tax property taxes um energy all of uh, commodities all the things that you need on a daily basis at the same time as asset prices declining you can see that happening right now it's going to get much much worse the inflation is going to run hot on the essentials that you need to live your life and non-essentials all the crap and all the overvalued tech stocks and and asset prices are going to come crashing down Saving money is much better than making money. Being self-reliant is better than trying to work two jobs, get a promotion, start new businesses. It's time to take the capital that you hopefully have, whatever capital that might be, and hunker inwards and look after yourself. Moving forward, the people producing on a small scale and with not a lot of bills that are frugal are going to be the survivors of this. And the consumers who do not produce anything of real essential value are going to have a hard time moving forward. Or if they're stuck in the crypto, tech stock, meme stock, real estate, just in the asset price category. So with that information, I hope that's helpful for you to make some decisions in your life. And let me know what you think in the comments. I'd really appreciate it. And I'm just relatively small youtuber you guys are all very smart i try to read every single comment and i really appreciate me fine-tuning my analysis of things and uh if you, somebody can prove me wrong love to hear it or if you've got another perspective i love to hear it thanks for tuning in we'll see you next time